Good morning, and as it is one minute past 10, uh, I would like to start by welcoming you all to this introductory session to the Green Nudging Playbook. Next slide, please. I'll just admit some more people who have arrived. So good morning, my name is Deanne Roche and I am a project manager at RAP and I have been working on the Green Nudging Playbook for the past two years. And for those who don't know RAP so well, we are a climate action NGO working in over 40 countries across the world, collaborating and working to tackle the causes of the climate crisis. And joining me on the call today, I have Polly Davis, who is one of the authors of the Green Nudging Playbook and also an analyst at RAP. And I also have Emily Heffer, who is a project coordinator at RAP, and we'll be looking after the stage management and the technical aspects of the webinar today. And she'll also be monitoring the chat, so please do pop any technical issues that you have in there. Thank you. So on that note, we are recording this session this morning and it will be shared with attendees after the event. So please do look out for it and be sure to share it with others who you think will have an interest in this subject. A few more notes, participants are muted. So please do use the chat function to interact with other attendees. And also please do use the Q&A function to log your questions. And you will find that button at the top of your screen in the middle of the toolbar. And we will aim to have a short session for questions at the end. But please do note that any questions that we don't get to today will be logged and answered and shared as a resource along with the recording. Next slide, please. So what are we going to cover today? So today I'd like to tell you the story of the Green Nudging Playbook and give you a little bit of background to the project and how we got to where we are today. I'm also going to give you a high level overview of what we mean by nudges and how we see them complementing policy design. Polly, who's on the call today, will also take you uh, into a deeper look as to what's included in the playbook and how you will get the best out of it. And then we're going to look at what's next for the Green Nudging Playbook and how you can get involved. So why do we need to act and how did we choose the focus of the playbook? Now, we will have all seen numerous images and reports on plastic pollution, and we understand the toll that this is taking on our planet. And it's important to understand the scale of the problem we face for this particular work and why we decided to focus on single use plastic coffee cups. Now, when you see that figure on screen, 500 billion disposable cups being consumed globally, it can be hard to visualize what that looks like, especially when you, as a consumer, are there holding your one coffee cup in your hand. But when we see that figure, we understand it's a significant figure and that change is needed. And that change will come through action and implementation which was the call to action at COP27 last year. And given the latest IPCC reports we've seen uh, over the past few years, we've seen an evolution from a shift from considering how we produce and use energy to considering our global impacts through international trade and right through to now, which is recognizing the importance of behaving, behavior change. Next slide, please. So, the playbook uh, was created as part of the Sustainable Lifestyles and Education Program of the One Planet Network, which aims to foster the uptake of sustainable lifestyles as the common norm. And through this global network of experts, practitioners and learners, the SLE program develops tools and resources such as this that allow policymakers businesses and civil society to build sustainable systems of living. And through the application of these resources and the uptake of sustainable lifestyles, the SLE program aims to address global challenges such as biodiversity conservation, resource efficiency, climate change mitigation, and poverty reduction, as well as social well-being. 
Now, the work leading up to the publication of the playbook started back in 2020 when the Swedish Environmental Protection Agency commissioned a report written by PBM, who are a behavioral science organization based in Sweden. And they were tasked to investigate whether nudging can be used to complement traditional policy tools and encourage more sustainable behaviours in citizens with a focus on single-use coffee cups. Now, the next step was to pilot a number of these nudges to determine what would work best. And unfortunately, uh, this next step was due to take place as COVID-19 pandemic forced the closure of many businesses. And that made engaging with the consumer pilots impossible throughout most of 2020 and 2021. However, instead of delaying the project's progression until restrictions were lifted, the Swedish EPA worked with RAP to conduct some pre-pilot research with a nationally representative online survey for Sweden. And this looked at citizen behavior and their consumption habits for hot drinks. And uh, we looked at this for pre-pandemic levels. So this looked at where did, where did people buy their drinks? When did they buy them? How many reusable cups they owned and how, how come they didn't use them? And let's be honest, that, that I think is something we can all relate to, I'm sure, as we sit with two cups in our cupboard. And this work broadened our understanding about which green nudges might be the most effective and acceptable to citizens and the barriers that we would need to overcome in promoting reusable alternatives. The study also considered um, impacts on business income, on threats to commercial viability, and this pre-trial behavioural exploration was an important early step to try and avoid any potentially costly implementation of ineffectual nudges. Following on from that study, the Swedish Environmental Protection Agency commissioned Chalmers Industria Technik, uh, again another company in Sweden, to uh, progress the green nudging proposals outlined in the previous study and to translate them into real world pilots. And this was done in Gothenburg. And the report for this can also be found on the One Planet Network, as can all these resources, which we will share with you. So using all this research and using those real world pilot learnings, RAP have compiled the Green Nudging Playbook, which is a culmination of all of this work. Next slide, please. Now I'll give you a quick view of the playbook. It is a practical guide for policymakers who wish to embed behavioural science into policymaking to help citizens live more sustainably. And we've aimed this at a non-technical audience to try and ensure it's as accessible to many, but there are links within the playbook to uh, further resources and reports uh, for those who wish to expand their knowledge or learn a bit more about any of the particular areas that we cover. Now, Although we aim this at policymakers, we do recognise that businesses and those who are interested in nudging in general to help influence and guide decisions towards more pro-environmental behaviours will also benefit from reading this playbook. It is a, a template with general guiding principles to support policymakers when they're partnering with businesses and supporting organisations to scope and implement behaviour change initiatives to discourage the, um, the consumption of single-use coffee cups in favour of reusable alternatives. However, I would like to stress that it is not a step-by-step -step manual, as, uh, as Polly will cover later. Every context is different, and this will need to be considered separately in every case. However, saying that, the playbook focuses upon uh, single-use coffee cups, but we believe that the principles can be applied to similar products and behaviours. Equally, whilst the playbook focuses on the, the Swedish market and policy context, the principles may be applicable to perhaps other North countries and to those with similar purchasing habits and contexts. Next slide, please. 
So let's talk nudging. It is the green nudging playbook after all. But some of you may be wondering what, what is a nudge? So nudges are non-restrictive interventions that alter the environment to make it easier for citizens to make better decisions. And with changes to the choice architecture or the, um, the decision context aims to guide citizens towards a, a particular behavior change without prohibiting other possible choices or impinging on, on free will. So for example, if we look at coffee cups, a potential nudge would be to change the default. And what I mean by this is instead of automatically giving your customer a disposable coffee cup, you make reusables the default and disposables the option that you must request. And nudging goes beyond the traditional communicative approach, usually influencing behavior in the moment when decisions are made. And in this case, in a coffee at the point of sales at the till. And they are easy and relatively cheap to implement for organizations who are not involved in policy making. So what is a green nudge? Uh, green nudges are positive and gentle persuasion techniques to encourage pro-environmental behaviors. And a final uh, but important note on uh, nudges is that all nudges should be transparent and never misleading, and it should be as easy as possible to opt out of the nudge. And as I mentioned earlier, for those who are interested in learning more about nudging and this area of behavioral science, you'll find links to useful resources in the playbook. Next slide, please. So policy design, on the other hand, involves creating rules and regulations that guide individual and collective behavior towards specific goals. And in the context of environmental policy, the goal is often to promote sustainable practices and reduce negative environmental impacts. And in the context of this playbook, the Swedish government proposed a policy package for single-use plastics to be implemented, which um, includes, but it's not limited to, prohibiting the disposable cups containing more than 15% plastic, as well as obliging businesses to offer drinks and food served in reusable cups. Now, green nudging can be used as a tool for policy design, as it can help policymakers to create more effective and efficient policies. So by understanding the factors that influence behavior, policymakers can design policies that encourage people to make environmentally friendly choices align with the policy goals and therefore contribute to its success. And from a business point of view, those who uh, adopt this change early and are in involved in that collaborative effort, they'll see the benefits from a smoother transition and happier customers. Implementation could also pave the way for implementing <clears throat> more restrictive policy options. So for example, a ban on all single use plastic cups in the future. And now I would like to hand over to my colleague Polly, who will take you through the playbook and what it contains in more detail. Thank you so much, Diane, um, for that fabulous introduction. Um, yeah, so I will be talking through the playbook today and giving you sort of a bit of an overview in terms of what is included um, and, and what we say. Um, so essentially, there are four main parts to this playbook. So it starts by taking you, the reader, uh, through green nudges at the higher level, what they are and their benefits. Um, so as Diane mentioned, green nudges can be really useful um, as they're able to sit alongside and complement traditional policy instruments um, by making sustainable behaviours essentially easier for citizens to do. So the playbook will also feature links to further reading, um, as Diane mentioned, so you, you will be able to source more information on the role of behavioural science um, and nudging in public policy if this is something that you are interested in. 
So next up, uh, the playbook talks through the practicalities of designing a green nudges strategy. This will draw on the pre-pilot work that was already delivered by the SLE working group, as well as the pilots that were concurrently developed and delivered alongside the creation of this playbook. So following on from this, the playbook goes into how to actually implement green nudges uh, within single use coffee cups. So how you can put a strategy into action. And it draws on the two previous reports, as well as the implementation of the pilots um, by the selected contractor we were in contact with in Sweden. And finally, the playbook discusses the importance of evaluating the impact of green nudges, uh, determining how successful the nudges were and how they can be uh, developed for the future and improved upon. Next slide, please. So, designing a green nudge strategy. What are the first steps to implementing a nudge? You need to design it. When it comes to green nudging and changing citizen behaviour, the key thing to remember, as Deanne mentioned, is that context is key. The context really matters um, as no one person or place is the same. So the key takeaway here is that there are a variety of green nudging strategies available to policymakers or businesses um, that you can choose from but they should be developed and selected based on how well they address the barriers to using a reusable cup or any other sustainable behaviour that you are trying to influence. Um, and this is faced by the target population that you are aiming to reach. So therefore, it's essential to understand your target population and the barriers present to them in detail uh, before developing a green nudge strategy. And that is why preliminary research is key to a successful nudge. Therefore, the first step to designing a nudging strategy is to define the target audience you want to reach. Figure out who will benefit most and be easy to reach. Where can you have the most impact? For example, if green nudges successfully change the behavior of your target audience and they never bought another single use coffee cup again, would there be a noticeable impact on the overall levels of single use coffee cup purchasing? Next slide, please. So the target audience for green nudges can be defined in many ways. Uh, for example, they may be based upon demographics or belonging to a particular social group, such as students of a university. They might have some other educational or professional associations. Perhaps they all own a specific product in common, such as iPhone users. Or they might hold specific values and beliefs, such as those with pro-environmental motivations. Potentially, the target audience has a current predisposition to engage with the target behaviour, so those who are open to using a reusable coffee cup, for example. And Potentially even more, there are plenty of ways to define a target audience. The key is to be really clear on how they are defined and the behaviour you are trying to change. In our pre-pilot research, RAP selected the target audience based on their ownership of reusable coffee cups. So we had regular users, irregular users and receptive non-users. Rather than socio-demographics, these groups were defined by their values and attitudes towards wanting to help the environment. And we did still include regular users. As you can see in the graph, only 39% of regular users use a re reusable cup every time they purchase a hot drink. So there was still plenty of room for improvement. And this audience would be quite easy to reach. So once a target audience is defined, you can move on to step two, which is understanding the current behaviour. What are citizens currently doing when it comes to single use and reusable coffee cups? What are the barriers and enablers for the target behaviour? Knowing the behaviour and the cause of this behaviour for your target audience is key in being able to understand the barriers and enablers they face and where best to place nudges where you will be able to make a real impact. 
if you cannot answer these questions sufficiently or there are knowledge gaps, um, this is when primary research should be conducted with the target audience to answer them. Um, if the case of a target audience cannot be reach, reached at this time, then a population with similar characteristics and context can be used, but this is less preferable. If the wrong population is measured, then the wrong sorts of nudges may be developed, which would address the wrong barriers. So this stage is really crucial to get right. Once you have the background context well covered, green nudges can then be devised. Um, so in general, we say that positive rewarding nudges are more preferable to negative inconveniencing nudges, um, although there is a potential that they could work well in conjunction with each other. So step three, design the solution. Next slide, please. As I mentioned, the best solution is based off an understanding of the barriers, but there are a core cool guiding principles that can help, which we will explore now. A good general principle is to design nudges which reward citizens for taking on the desired behaviour, such as using a reusable cup or making it easier to do so rather than inconveniencing them, for example, such as making them ask for a disposable cup or pay an additional fee. But there are plenty of routes that a nudge can take. So, for example, uh, it might be helpful to stimulate social norms by illustrating other people's reusable coffee cup use, uh, the popularity of this, um, because we as humans behave in ways that we think others will approve of, um, we are more likely to do something when we see evidence of others also doing it. Furthermore, you could use uh, credible or relatable messengers so we are more likely to believe and follow orders from someone that we deem credible or we relate to. So this could include celebrities or social media influencers, whoever we might look up to. Again, perhaps rewarding and incentivizing reusable coffee cup use. So we are more motivated to actually change our behavior if we are promised something positive in return. So this reward does not have to be financial, um, but it could instead be the promise of an emotional payoff or it could satisfy a number of intrinsic motivations um, that were identified possibly in your primary research. You might also switch all defaults in favour of the sustainable behaviour, so in favour of using reusable coffee cups. So going with the flow of preset options, uh, this does indicate what is normal and going against this requires more effort. Next slide, please. Thank you. Furthermore, you could boost the saliency of your message. So as humans, we will pay more attention to we will recall better and we will believe information that is particularly bold, notable and novel. So this can be a really great strategy to grabbing people's attention and getting them to start thinking about this behaviour that you're trying to nudge. You might frame the nudge message to highlight social norms. So fitting in with the crowd, Framing a message to highlight how popular this behaviour is will be a lot more powerful than saying that it is uncommon. So it's better to say that people are very rapidly adopting reusable cups rather than highlighting the fact that it's still uh, a smaller part of the population that are using them regularly. And furthermore, you might encourage commitments to reusable coffee cup use. So we are more likely to look through on something after we have committed to do so, and that is either publicly or any other way. So satisfying citizens' intrinsic motivations, for example, a desire for convenience or to act pro-environmentally over their extrinsic motivations, for example, saving money, may actually lead to sustained behaviour change more in the long term. Using monetary re uh, rewards can create the risk that citizens will simply revert back to using a disposable coffee cup if the financial incentive or the disincentive is removed. 
Um, however, that said, it may still be a useful hook to engage those for whom cost is a barrier, um, who can then develop secondary, more intrinsic motivations on top of that. Next, thank you. So after you have developed the green nudging strategy, the next step is to create a plan to actually implement it. So this will involve, in the case of reusable coffee cups, talking to potential partner coffee businesses um, and assessing any risks involved as well as ways to mitigate them. If the green nudge is feasible, then it means this can be easily and conveniently implemented in a conductive context. The specifics of a feasible green nudge may differ from one location to another, but it should always be affordable. It should be able to be implemented within a reasonable time frame and manageable by the pilot business. So some key principles to consider is that when you are planning the implementation of a green nudge, consider what is going to be the most feasible in the context that you are working in. Uh, develop a risk register with appropriate mitigations, consider what might go wrong or how the nudges might create unwanted side effects, and then build solutions into their implementation. The ideal green nudging solution won't be a one size fits all strategy. Uh, the nudges used must be appropriate for the customer base and the local context of each business to ensure that there is no negative impact on customer satisfaction or return. Moreover, it's important to be aware that business partnerships that you make are really crucial for the successful delivery of green nudges. And therefore, it's really important that strong relationships are established and maintained throughout the pilot and beyond. Next, please. So the final stage of your green nudging journey will be to conduct an impact evaluation. So evaluation is crucial to a test, learn, adapt approach because it is impossible to scale up green nudge without knowing if and how it works. Without evaluation, ineffective nudges could be rolled out and resources wasted or effective nudges could be consigned to the bin. Green nudging evaluation should be planned at the beginning of the process. Do not leave it to the last minute. During RAPS pre-pilot research, the evaluation method we deemed the most appropriate was pre and post intervention measurement of the proportion of takeaway or on the go hot drinks sold in single use coffee cups. Uh, additional KPIs and outcome variables will depend upon which green nudges are selected. So randomised trials are considered the gold standard usually, um, but in our case, this approach was not really deemed appropriate due to the impossibility of controlling so many different variables, um, given that the interventions we implemented were deployed in the real world. It's also important to note that this should not be a linear process. Um, an impact evaluation can be integrated into the deployment of a nudge, so you can test, learn, adapt accordingly. So why do you need to read this playbook? Well, the benefits are numerous. There is no time like the present to support green nudges. 94% of European citizens say that protecting the environment is important to them, but they can feel overwhelmed and unsure of the best action to take. Nudges can provide a guidance for citizens to take action. This business, this gives business an excellent opportunity to encourage behaviour change via positive methods, helping citizens to ditch the disposable because they want to, rather than because they feel coerced or compelled to avoid negative consequences. This is likely to result in longer lasting, more sustained behaviour change, and it will contribute to the formation of habits that will be maintained, even if the rewarding nudges are removed. Next, please. So, moreover, uh, there are increasing bans and policies coming into effect, which will affect businesses 
Um, and therefore, it's better to take action now to ease that transition and keep customers happy rather than be forced to change quickly um, when these bans come into effect. Not to mention, of course, the environmental benefits. We all know that it's time to act and tackle the causes of climate change, um, and it's important to work towards a more sustainable future and a huge impact uh, a huge part of that will be by making better use of our existing products and the limited resources that we have available to us. So green nudges can be really great at supporting policy interventions and help uh, habits form in citizens and allow adaptation to business needs. And moreover, Adaption to the local context will really increase the likelihood of these nudges being effective, um, leading to long term sustained behaviour change. Thank you, Polly. Uh, now, this was the time we had uh, left for questions, but I uh... I don't know if I'm happy, surprised, but I can see that there are no questions. And uh, I hope that that reflection uh, on the clarity of the, the presentation today. However, I don't want this to uh, discourage people for answer, uh, asking questions. And so we will leave our, our details at the end for anybody who wishes to get in touch with further questions. So then moving on, next slide, please. Okay, so then what is next uh, with the with the green nudging playbook? What do we hope to achieve? So we hope with this introductory, and that's what this is. This is uh, very much an introductory, so that we can take you through the playbook as we have, and we hope that it will have piqued your interest somewhat and given you some things to think about and consider. And that if you haven't already, please do head on over to the One Planet Network website and download the playbook and have a look at how you can start using it today. Now, our ambition is that we will see policymakers and businesses across the globe take on these guiding principles and start collaborating and working together to tackle single-use plastics, learning about the problems specific to their countries, learn their consumer behaviours, and looking at how we start promoting reusables and making better use of the resources that we have. So anybody who is ready to explore green nudging and how it can benefit you, your policies, your organization, we would love to hear from you and how you use the playbook in the real world, running pilots and driving change. Next slide, please. So on notes, as we've been super efficient and you guys have been great today, I'd like to thank you all for joining the introductory session. And I'd like to thank anybody who is watching this recording back and taking the time to get to know the playbook a little bit more. And our emails are there on the screen. So please, like I say, if you have any questions or any comments uh, or anything that you, if you're willing to share with us, then please do get in touch. And I'd like to thank you once again, and we'll close the session here. Thank you. <laughs>